If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. I have conducted a simple experiment to explain the concept of the throughput calculation. In the experiment, I have done five different executions based on five different settings in the throughput timer. As you see in the screen, there are five runs, each with 10 threads for the duration of 60 seconds targeting the throughput of 60 samples per minute. The ramp up of this experiment is 10 seconds for all the runs. And first run, the configuration is this thread only. So this thread only configuration, what will happen is the load, basically the throughput will be distributed among all the threads. So here the target throughput is 60 and the thread count is 10. So this throughput 60 will be distributed among all the threads. So the total would be around 600. Since we have the ramp up of 10 seconds, so this ramp up will get influenced. That is why we are achieving around 555 samples in a minute. But if you see the second run, which has the same thread count, duration and target, but the configuration is all active threads. So this all active threads, what will happen? The throughput will be divided among all the active threads in all the thread groups. Assume that you have multiple thread groups in your test plan and you have placed the timer in the right place. So this throughput will be divided among all the active threads in all the thread groups. So that is the keyword here, all the thread groups. And this will try to achieve uh, little more than the target throughput. So that's what uh, it works in the back end. And if you see the third run, the same thread count, duration and target throughput, but the configuration is all active threads in current thread group. The keyword here is current thread group. Basically, it will try to achieve the throughput by dividing the uh, number among all the active threads in the current thread group. So the run 2 and run 3 will always achieve a little bit higher than the target throughput because of the uh, non-shared algorithm. But the run 4 and run 5, it is very similar to run 2 and run 3, but the output is more accurate. So here the target throughput is 60 in run 4 and run 5, but the output is 61 because the shared algorithm always keep up to the target throughput and then achieve the exactly. Not exactly, at least you try to match the number. So that is why you will see the accuracy is more in shared algorithm and accuracy will be slightly less uh, in the uh, non-shared algorithm and the accuracy of the target throughput versus output will be more in case of uh, this thread only. So these are the five different options available. So only thing you have to keep in mind is you have to keep the constant throughput timer in the right place and you have to configure using the right throughput calculation algorithm. Otherwise, you will end up in having more or if you have under power machine, you will end up in receiving the very uh, less throughput not just the resource of your machine, even if you have the timers or any other highly influenced elements in your test plan. So those also will be influenced in your total uh, throughput. Jmeter always tries to keep up the throughput, but there are other influences based on the available resource. If you have very underpowered machine, then the throughput will not be able to achieve. And uh, if you have a lot of timers, and other heavy elements in your test plan, then it will not be able to achieve the throughput. And you should not change the throughput very frequently because Jmeter will take some time to consume the throughput and it will do some internal calculation to achieve the throughput. So if you are changing the throughput frequently uh, based on some uh, functions or uh, some parameter, then you will not be able to achieve the throughput. And as I mentioned, the shared algorithm is the more accurate. So as you see in the previous slide, the run four and run five is almost the uh, same throughput we are trying to achieve. 
but if you see the uh, run 2 and run 3 uh, those are non shared uh, mode and uh, it will try to achieve the target throughput it will go beyond the target throughput but a uh, shared mode will always try to keep your throughput very close as possible so these points is very important whenever you are trying to implement the constant throughput timer so now it's time for a quick demo so this is my simple jmeter test plan where you can see only one dummy sampler which uses the default uh, settings for the connect time latency and response time and uh, i have the aggregate report and i have the view results tree so in this context we don't need a view results tree so i'm just going to delete it and i'm going to add the timer for my uh, sampler so just right click on the sampler and go to add timer and constant throughput timer so in this case i'm going to achieve 60 samples per minute and i'm going to uh, select the this thread only so this is the default setting in the throughput uh, timer and in the thread group i have configured 10 and the loop count is uh, infinite and the ramp up uh, we can have some ramp up uh, say 10 seconds and the duration is 60 seconds and now uh, if we if we run the test so basically it will uh, yield around uh, more than uh, 60 because the throughput will be distributed along among all the threads so it will be 10 multiplied by this value 60 so it will be around 550 to 600 so that is the samples you will achieve if you use this configuration and if you play around uh, with these multiple settings in the throughput based calculation you will yield different numbers based on your resource based on your uh, jmeter test plan size and if it has more timers it will influence if it is a high response time it will influence so all the factors will influence your uh, total throughput and uh, even if you have very high power machine this throughput will be influenced for example uh, i have a very low load but in i have very powerful machine it doesn't matter whether it's a big machine or small machine so basically jmeter will try to achieve the target throughput whatever you have entered in the configuration so just play around and uh, you will get the idea and based on your requirements you can just select the uh, configuration and you'll be able to achieve the uh, load so now the execution has been completed as you see the total number of samples we have achieved is 555 but the target should be uh, 600 and uh, since we have the ramp up uh, period influence here so it might uh, influence the number of uh, samples at the end of the run but now if we enter zero here actually this is not a good practice so there should be some ramp up in your test just for the demonstration purpose i am just uh, configuring uh, ramp up as zero so now let me clear this and let us run the test we will see after a minute or how many samples it has produced okay now the execution has been completed as you see after a minute as per the throughput 60 and the third is 10 so 10 multiplied by 60 600 so that is what we have achieved in the aggregate report so just play around and understand the context then you can configure based on your requirement so that's it guys on my side. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or join the community QA Insights for free. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel.